welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning is on race, and race relations. A long history of segregation has kept African Americans and whites living in separate worlds in Milwaukee and throughout the state. Sadly, Milwaukee still tops the list of cities as the most segregated in terms of race and poverty. Racism has been linked to a number of problems across the country, including health concerns such as high infant mortality and maternal mortality rates in African Americans. Milwaukee County Executive Chris Abley recently proclaimed racism a public health crisis in Milwaukee County and it's a privilege to have him here to talk about that and other issues of concern today. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. It's always good to have you here and you were first elected eight years ago. Eight years ago. Time yeah. flies by, right? It sure does. And yeah. so with that said, you have announced your plans for re-election. So yep. go ahead and explain why it's so important for you to uh, seek sure. re-election in 2020. Well, you know, there's a thing that happens a lot when you're an elected official. People will come up and periodically say, well, what's next? Mm -hmm. And when they say that, they usually mean, what's next for you, elected official? Like, what office are you going to run for? Uh, but, uh, you know, I ran for county executive because I wanted to make a difference at a local level. Mm -hmm. I ran for county executive because counties provide social services and I saw the need. Uh, but I didn't run as a stepping stone to the next part of a political career. Gotcha. Uh, I ran because I wanted to make a difference. And the reason I'm running again is, uh, you know, we've made progress, uh, a lot of progress, but there is so much more that needs to be done. And I have the best team I have ever had. Uh, we know more about what we're doing than we ever have, and I feel like we're just getting started. All right, so you have highlighted three issue areas that you want to prioritize in your next term. So quickly, just kind of give us an idea of what those are. Well, uh, so uh, as you'll see in the list, the number one uh, issue area is race equity. Mm. Uh, there's nobody in uh, Milwaukee, and frankly, there shouldn't be anybody in the state of Wisconsin who's unclear uh, on some of the challenges we face. But I think a lot of people uh, are unclear on just how stark those uh, challenges are. It's one thing to say that the racial disparities on everything from employment to uh, graduation rates uh, to home ownership uh, to sentencing uh, are uh, uh, unequal, mm -hmm. but that very dramatically understates the problem. They're not a little bit unequal, they're hugely unequal and uh, this has been the case not for 10 years, not for 20 years, for you know half a century right. at least. Yeah. And uh, it is the single biggest uh, and most pressing issue, uh, and the, I think the, the, the biggest challenge holding us all as a state and as a community and certainly as a county back. Uh, so the reason uh, it's the top priority is because that is where we want to put all, you know, the most of our energy. I mean, that's the, it's the thing that is most important to address. And also by naming it, uh, we talk about zip codes, mm -hmm. uh, but it isn't. It's about race. Uh, the, when people uh, talk about uh, that, you mentioned in the uh, opening, health, uh, the health impact. Uh, so uh, just so people know, uh, even when you control for socioeconomic background, you know, same level of wealth, same level of education, uh, African Americans in this country have a much shorter uh, life expectancy. Uh, the incidence of chronic diseases, the incidence of stress, uh, there is no possible way of looking at that data uh, and not concluding that this is about race. And the way we, the first thing we need to do to address it is to get real clear about what the problem is. Uh, and I think there's a lot, of, a lot of hesitance to do that and there's mm. a lot of dancing around the edges. Uh, but we're going to be talking about it a lot uh, at the county. And that really goes in with your other issues uh, that you are concerned with, healthy communities, mm -hmm. which falls right into that, and changing how the state of Wisconsin funds local government. Right. So uh, race and race relations is one of the main subjects that you we're going to be focusing on today. And I think it's a breath of fresh air mm -hmm. that uh, you've brought this to the forefront because really all the statistics that we've heard about, like you said, for decades, decades. when dealing with not only the state of Wisconsin, but the city of Milwaukee in particular, mm -hmm. 
it's like this dark cloud that yeah. overshadows all the other great things that happen here. So yeah. to hear someone pinpoint that this is a true issue, we all know that, yeah. and being open and ready to talk about it, regardless of which, this is a breath of fresh air. So oh, I'm definitely. glad to have you here to discuss it. Uh, you and County Board Vice Chairman Marcelia uh, Nicholson, you proclaimed racism this public health crisis. So uh, talk about, and I think you've pretty much, you know, given us an idea what led you to signing this resolution, but what made you just take this specific step? Well, so there's been an increasing amount of research nationally uh, on the connection between race, racism, and health. Mm -hmm. uh, and because as a country, the way we address health uh, challenges or health crises is much more coordinated uh, and much more likely to garner the kind of significant change in policy and resources than what we're doing, mm -hmm. uh, it forces us to view everything we do at the county through that lens. And uh, uh, part of the problem, uh, it, it also puts a big spotlight on the issue because, you know, as you said, it's been you know decades and decades and decades of the same thing, and. I think a big part of it is we don't talk about it. But again, as I said, it's not just education levels, it's not just employment, it's not just housing, it's not just uh, you know unequal sentencing, over aggressive policing. Uh, it's things that people don't think about, like access to capital. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, your ability, anybody's ability to rise out of any circumstance. Uh, is impacted by an awful lot of things we don't always think of. In this country, in 2017, of all the investment that happened nationwide into startups, startup companies, new companies are growing, uh, only uh, 4% in 2017, four went to women and minority owned companies. Mm. So it's not like it's 40%, it's not like it's 25, four. In 2017, I think that makes it a little harder for people to uh, uh, start a business and wow. access getting a loan. And that's after a century where, you know, after World War II, uh, you know, access for African Americans was you didn't have access to the GI Bill. You couldn't get the same loans. You couldn't buy houses uh, in areas where, uh, you know, people or policies prevented you from doing it. Mm -hmm. And how are people building wealth in their house? And you just start adding all of these things up. And oh, by the way, where are the good schools going to be? Where are the roads going to be better maintained? Which, you know, it snows. Which streets get plowed first? You call for an ambulance and you need medical help. Well, how, how long does it take, depending mm -hmm. on where you live and what you look like? There are real differences, and all of it's there. And until we call out, hey, this is race. It's not zip code. It's not just socioeconomic background. It is race uh, that, implicit or not, uh, is in, you know, policies that make it structurally harder and the impact is people live shorter lives, less high quality lives, uh, because of that, Afri African Americans specifically. Mm -hmm. And it's important to note that Milwaukee County is working with the Government Alliance on Race and Equity to yeah. train county employees on racial equity and create a racial equity plan. Yeah. Talk about that. Well, so the Government Alliance on Racial uh, uh, Equity is uh, a group that first came on to my writer because uh, our uh, amazing director of the Office of African American Affairs uh, Nicole Berkshire, uh, she, she told me about them and essentially it's what it sounds like. It's a group that is a lot of municipalities around the country that are all looking at this issue mm -hmm. and they're trying to share you know, what works well, what doesn't work, who's got good ideas, but the goal is let's all help each other get better at this. Let's build more momentum, build an ever increasing toolbox of policies. Uh, uh, and ideas that can be used by others, uh, and they've been great. They've been out here uh, to Milwaukee, uh, and they're going to be out here again. And uh, you know, I just try and listen a lot when they're here because <laughs> yeah. they know a lot more about it than I do. But. Wow! So it's just good to know these things are taking place, and we mm -hmm. will have an opportunity to meet Nicole uh, coming up in the next segment to talk more about uh, the Office on African American Affairs mm -hmm. and uh, what's been going on up to this point. So. Um, my question for you, though, because race is an uncomfortable subject, or yeah. racism uh, is not something people really want to talk about. Like you said, people go around the edges, yeah. it's swept under the rug. 
And a lot of times people don't want to face the reality that they could be just a little bit racist themselves. Yeah. Not on purpose, but it's just kind of right. like um, society sometimes uh, kind of sets people's minds sure. to think a certain way. So it. what has been the response since you've signed this particular resolution? Uh, well, there's been a range. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure. Uh, the more heartening response uh, has been uh, from inside the county, uh, by leadership team, uh, and, and frankly, uh, the staff in general, the uh, enthusiasm for this and the buy-in uh, has been great. And I think it maybe came a little faster for some, slower than others, but uh, what I mean by the buy-in is the county impacts people in so many different ways, whether it's transit or it's parks or it's the criminal justice system, uh, uh, you know, where we serve, how we serve. And when every department head and every division head is thinking, okay, specific to how our services impact just the African American community, uh, you know, how can we do better? Are we are we uh, uh, are we providing services equitably, and and are we doing it in the right places, in the right ways? And can we get better? And this is a proactive, continuing thing mm -hmm. in the community. Uh, yeah, I've 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 heard from some people who don't love the idea, mm. uh, and I think for some of that, it it comes maybe from fear or anxiety. Uh, I you know people think they're being attacked, and you know to me. Uh, the history of every social movement in this country that succeeded, one thing that all of them have in common is uh, it's when it isn't just the aggrieved, whatever group it is, mm -hmm. that's marching. It's when we as a country become big W we and we realize, you know, as King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere yes. and feel that we are a better place for uh, making sure that equal protection under the law means everybody. And I don't claim to know what it's like to walk in someone else's shoes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's like to be female or LGBT or African American or Indian or Native American, but on my worst day, I know my world's a better place uh, when everybody, uh, every human being on the planet is treated with dignity and has the same uh, uh, access and opportunity and health care uh, that I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that somehow we got here when manufacturing jobs started to right. erode and the federal government played a role in mm -hmm. determining who could live in various parts of the Milwaukee region. And yep. so here we are uh, with the remnants of that. So yeah. I guess as we wrap up this segment, how do we go about changing the mentality and the mindset? Yeah. Because we know the numbers, we've talked about it over and over again, but what do we do? Well, I think the first step is we name the issue and we call it out publicly for what it is. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, we uh, put out goals. Uh, I mean, Milwaukee has this uh, tendency sometimes, we can be real cynical, uh, and we accept whether we know we're doing our, the inevitability of things, mm -hmm. you know? So you bring up this issue four decades ago, three decades ago, two decades ago, even people who might think, yeah, that's, that's not good, but they just kind of throw up their hands and say, well, that's just how it is. Well, the you know, first call it out, second say, don't accept the inevitability of anything. We can change anything we want, we just have to want to do it. So we publicly take accountability for it at that press conference where we uh, uh, declared uh, the board and my office mm -hmm. uh, racism as a public health crisis. I made the point of saying, and I'll say it again here, hold us accountable. Uh, and not just for talking about it, uh, but for doing something about it, changing policy, changing the way we deliver services, changing the way we fund things. Uh, you should hold us all accountable. And if when we all do that, you want to make change, that's how it's got to start. I love that. So uh, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. you've been here many times, but mm -hmm. I remember we were talking about the development of the Milwaukee County Office on African American yeah. Affairs, and it's now a reality. So yeah. uh, I love the fact that things that we've talked about are now, you know, actually uh, in the making and people have gotten jobs and titles and yeah. you're making moves. So I'm ready to talk about that and we're going to yeah, meet your great. director uh, coming up right after the break. She makes me look good. <laughs> when we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we'll continue this conversation with Milwaukee County Executive Chris Abley and be joined by Nicole Brookshire, who is the director of the county's office on African American Affairs. We will do that right after this.